we are writing a function call. And basically, here we are in the button click for at the add a message. In this button click, I've decided I actually want to write an encrypt function that's going to receive an integer which represents either one or two and then the ori S original, which is the string. In this case, it's the string that was entered in this edit, put, edit box. So it's a string, an English string. We're going to encrypt it into our code and that's going to be done in a function called encrypt. So I'm going to go all the way up to top here and right above the word procedure here, press enter, and then I'm going to type the word function, encrypt open brackets. This is your first thing. You actually do this in grade 12, but it's not a bad idea to learn now. So any work that's outside of the curriculum, you get extra marks. So it's actually good for you to actually learn it now and do it in your pack now. So write the word function, encrypt, and then over here, the two parameters. Now I'm going to call it inum, colon, integer, semicolon, and s line, colon, string, and open brackets. So as you can see, there are two parameters in my function encrypt. Now I'm trying to make it so that you can see it. So there are the two parameters. Parameters meaning the things in brackets. This function is going to receive those things, but it has to return a data type. You cannot write a function without the following colon and then what data type you want it to return. So they am isolating that function so you can see it better. That is your first function that you've ever written in your whole life. You write your header and then you wait for my instruction. I will wait for you to write your header. And now I'm going to implement it. So you've all got the header. Then we're going to highlight the whole header. We call this a header because it's like the heading of a method. It's like the heading of your chapter or so on. So we highlight it and we hold the control key and we hold the shift key and we press the letter C. I don't hear many people pressing any keys. And here is my function being highlighted. I mean, being implemented. Function to encrypt a string. Shh. Excuse me. What is the matter? So I'm typing a heading, I mean a, a comment here, because I, I want to know where this thing is. Uh, it's very difficult to find your methods when you are writing hundreds and thousands of lines of code. Anyway, so we're going to go back to our button click to add this message. And yes, our cipher has not been declared as an integer in this button click event, so I better go and do that. S original is fine. There's our call to that function. Then, in the function itself, I am going to move all of this. I'm removing all of that. I'm going to cut it. Control X. And I'm going to go and put it into my function. There it is. But we're going to make some changes, of course. Because I num is got to be here. And this has got to be S encrypted. It's got to be a variable inside this function. And then, of course, there's going to be other variables that we need here. And this S original must be 
the variable s line that's coming into this function. So wherever I see s original, I'm highlighting all of this, and I'll click the two pens on the left-hand side here, and I'm going to type s line instead. And then we're good. The only thing that's missing here is s alpha. I mean the alphabet, that alpha, and our code 1. So this must be either 0 or 1. Okay, fine, 1 or, or actually we should actually be, it should be 1 or 2. What we're going to do is when we send our um, item index to encrypt, we'll add 1 to that number, our number. So this is quite a complex thing to do, but if you can use this in your pet, then you get extra marks. It does help in the case of what we want to do here. Of course, this button add this message, I need to get my constant out of here as well and delete some variables. If you have variables that are not being used inside any method, then you could have problems. I'm just trying to find my function. I took put double, yeah, there they are, because I put those lines all around it. So I've got to put my alpha, my constant alpha, back there again. Let's see what else is going to be surplus over here. Well, we don't need the K. K doesn't, isn't required. Um, I cipher has got to be the item index. So that's fine. Uh, what is B del? S original, B del is the thing. Okay, everything else seems to be okay. We can keep those other variables as long as we're using them. Um, but I cipher has got to be the item index. So I'm going to set I cipher equals the item index of this RDG cipher. item index and I'll just add one to it so that we can have a one or a two instead of naught and one. We have cipher one and cipher two which I've got there code one and code two and that button click. So everything will happen as normal it's just that the encrypt function is going to receive the code of the cipher which one we're going to have and the original message and it's going to return an encrypted message and store it in S encrypted. And then all we do then is insert the line here like we did already. But to fix up that function S encrypted, I mean the, the encrypt function, the function that's returning the encrypt code, we have to make sure that is all fine now. There's my function encrypt receives. When it comes in, it's, it's INUM and um, S line. But when, it, when we used it, we sent variable I cipher and S original. You see that? But when it's being used in the, the actual function, that I cipher now is called I num. Same thing with a different name. I num and the S original is now called S line. And we're going to store it in a variable called S encrypted, but we're not finished, because guess what we do here? Before the function is finished, we have to say result equals whatever S encrypted is. So right here before the end of the function, we say result colon equals S encrypted. If you don't have this statement here, then your function will not work. So we have to make sure we've got everything right here. As you can see, there's a lot of cases and so on. We might have some, we've got something extra going on here. As you can see, this is too much. Um, we have got, oh yes, oh yes, no, it's not too much because we've got a for loop and then we have a case within a for loop within a case structure. So this is a very complex code here and you'll get good marks for this complex code here. Because you have a case structure and then you have a for loop inside for one of the options of that case structure, and then you have a case inside that for loop. So that is pretty hectic. And 
obviously having all of these ends in the right places and we have covered that part I've just moved it into a function so now I can use it anywhere in my program and that's the cool part for editing a message over here if I want to change my original message I have to save an encrypted version updated not so so you have to re-encrypt it so when I want to go and get my encrypted message and I want to change it as you can see when I choose our option naught that means we're going to enter a new message but I have to encrypt it so then I have to have s encrypt and as you can see all I have to do is call the encrypt function with two parameters and we know that it works because we wrote the code already of course our code has to be declared as a variable over here there it is our code is now declared as a variable this is part of your complex coding making a user defined method you get extra marks for that so uh, we've got this enter cipher number one or two going and then we have this call to the function to encrypt it so we've got s new and s encrypt and this is if we chose this particular option okay if we chose this particular option now if we chose this particular option then we need to go and change stuff in there don't we well inside begin and end let's do it why not because remember in the case structure only one of these options will be selected in your case structure only one option will be selected you don't have to worry so over here I'm going to write code to edit the name I mean the message and the encrypted section of the message these two things original encrypted we're going to change it where the message ID is such and such so guess what we have to connect to the table we have to go to tbr message dot first and so on there we go and I'm going to copy and paste because I seriously want to go a little bit faster so with my work so here and I'm going to use my b found variable which is already been declared and it's uh oh not a good idea we have to do that we have to set b found equal false so here we go while not tbl message dot end of file and b found equals false do if tbl message square brackets square brackets inverted commas what is the oh my word wrong place message rd if the message rd because we want to get to the right message if that is equal to what is the integer where are we well here we are we're in the edit button click event where we found that we want to change the message and we sent off we went off to the encrypted part the rid is the thing that has already been found the person chose the message and then over here chose that they wanted to replace the original so when we go to bt and edit we get the rid of that message from the table and then the option for choosing the original is option naught of the item index and we wrote the code to quickly go and encrypt the new message because we wanted a new message and then we went to go and write a fancy function to encrypt and now we're going to go and write that both of those things the s new and s encrypt we're going to edit the table wherever if the s um, where the where the message rd equals rid begin and end if tbl message rid equals rid which is we got right at the beginning yesterday we'll then do a begin and end
And of course, we've got to do TV or message. Yes, there's a lot of things. We've got to just get used to it, guys. Uh, message ID. Uh, oh, wait. TV or message. Uh, TV or message dot next, sorry. We've got, to, we've got to worry about the dot next story. Has to happen. Otherwise, the while loop. We've got the while loop going here. We go to the first row of the message table table while we're not at the end and while B find is false. If the message ID is RID, then we'll say 